What's up guys? We are here in the wonderful city of New Orleans. Sitting here with uh, Polly Watts, uh, owner of the Avenue Pub. That's right. And proprietor, and uh, this was recently voted one of the top beer bar, one, top 100 beer bars in the United States. What I like about this place, like when I came here a couple of years ago, was that I did not expect the breadth and scope of beer that was available to me when I walked in. I walked in and I was like, cool bar. And then I walked in and looked at that bottle list and just went, oh my God, that's so sexy. It is, it is, it is a great bottle it list. Is. It's so oddly enough, part of the reason that, that we evolved in that fashion was when I started getting seriously into craft beer seven or eight years ago, there were very few national craft, American craft breweries available right. to us in Louisiana. You know, three-seer system and all of that, we could only get what we could get. You couldn't bootleg things over the state lines just because you wanted something. We have the same problems in Texas. Right. We actually, when I came here two years ago, we were doing a uh, A bottle. comparison. Yeah, yeah. No, we were actually doing a bottle run where we were coming over here because we can't get Cantillon right. or Trois or right. Dome. Right. So we were coming over here with bottles that you can't get over here. Right. And then doing, we actually did we have a lot of bottle trades right there in that corner. And we have a lot of customers that do that. Now, what happened was some of the importers, like Shelton Brothers, mm -hmm. um, really worked with me early on and would send me onesies and twosies of things. Right. And as that grew, and as our volume grew, we started getting access to things like Cantillon, some, and some things, Trois Dames is a very good example. We started carrying Trois Dames when it was only available in bottles. Um, and the same with Bologi, which is another one of our favorite breweries. I've New Orleans was such a new stuff. market. Right that almost all of the people here had never heard of any of this stuff. But then again, they hadn't heard of most craft beer labels out there. So when they came in, we had the opportunity. They didn't come in thinking that they knew a lot about craft beer and order the things that they recognized. They, they had to talk to the staff. Right. And it allowed us to develop our bottle list and then our draft list. And let's mm -hmm. actually talk about the history of the bar, because this bar has been open for 30 Almost 30. Years? We're 29 now. So your father, Dwayne, Correct. He owned the Avenue Pub originally? He, or no? he opened it when I was a senior at Tulane. Okay. And I helped him, as a matter of fact. I was a bartender. Um, so I helped him open it. I worked here for about six months, went off and did my career, worked for Bell South, moved out of state. And in the intervening years, my dad was really a neighborhood bar right. kind of person. He was, he was pretty much a committed Bud Miller Coors drinker yeah. and scotch. And bourbon. <laughs> I grew up. I, I grew up in Ohio. Right. I understand yeah. these things where it's like you know. And he had a few craft beer selections and a couple of whiskey selections, but uh, his his bar was really centered on the people that lived close right. to the pub and a lot of service industry. New Orleans is a 24-hour town. Yeah. We're open 24 hours a day, and so we get the you know as the bars and restaurants close in other parts of the city or in this part of the city, we get a lot of those people very very late night. Let's talk about Hurricane Katrina. Mm -hmm. um, I heard an awesome story, and I just wanted to get your take on what happened with that. So, like, this bar had never closed down in the entire time it was open. Well, once we went 24 hours, there was probably about six months to nine months right after we first opened where okay. we hadn't been 24 hours. But, but essentially, that's true, yeah. And so I heard this awesome story about Dwayne, your dad, uh, going to the general manager and being like, well, I guess we got to close down because, like, all kinds of shit was going on on the streets. My dad didn't want to close. Right. Um, he and several of his uh, bar staff stayed. Uh, they shut the doors um, once the curfew started and basically rode out the hurricane here. When things started getting violent in the city, which was right after the flood, so it was about 24 hours after the hurricane right. hit, um, he stuck it out until about Thursday morning when he called me and said, uh, okay, I'm getting out now because... And, and this is what he said, if I stay, I will probably have to shoot someone. And the value of my property is not worth having to live with that. Wow. 
So I got in my car. I was in Kentucky at the time. At any rate, I came down and picked him up, and, and we went back. We stayed about a week, week and a half, and then we, then we drove back down here and opened under generator power right before Hurricane Rita hit. Wow. So double whammy. Right. That. Yeah. Jesus. My dad and I actually evacuated for a couple of nights. We left the staff here. Yeah. One of my favorite uh, parts of the story was when, they, uh, when uh, the gentleman who told me the story uh, said that Dwayne was going around and he went to the general manager and he was like, all right, we're locking up. And he looks at the GM and he's like, where are the keys? And GM's like, I don't have any keys. <laughs> what do you mean you don't have any keys? <laughs> I gave them to you. You've never given me any keys. I've worked for you for like five years. You've never given me any keys. And right. I was like, well, shit, I don't even have any keys. You no, know, we don't. We didn't have keys. <laughs> yeah. So they went out back and they knocked over the fence that was out back and then they just boarded up the place. Like I'm, they not literally sure, I'm not it sure over. how true the knocking over the fence part is, but that is essentially true. They found lumber and they boarded everything up we'll go, and nailed it We'll go it with the shut. found lumber yeah. on that. <laughs> Now you're at this place, like you have this amazing whiskey bar upstairs that we're shooting at. Uh, the, you've now been voted one of the best craft beer bars in the nation six years in a row. I love the fact that you now managed to make this transition from being just a neighborhood bar into being one of the best known craft beer bars in the nation, but still being a neighborhood bar and still giving back to everybody. Like that's fascinating to me that you well, haven't I think, lost that. Yeah, I think it, we've worked really hard to keep it because you know the market. One of the things I've learned in, in owning the bar is that if you, it's very easy to let the market decide what you're going to carry mm -hmm. and what you're going to do and what direction. And for years, in fact, it was as we were trying to get craft beer established, we still had a real heavy demand for Bud Miller and Coors. And I would get pushback from some of our locals about decreasing the amount of selections that we offered on Bud Miller and Coors. And eventually you'll attract the customers that you want. Customers that we want are people who have more of a neighborhood attitude. Right. And less of the beer bar with a big B in front of it. <laughs> like, at the end of the day, a beer is a beer. And what I love about beer is that beer is a great equalizer. You have to, you have, to have fun with it. Yeah, absolutely. So what is for the future? Like, what do you, what do you see you guys doing? You know, the first thing we did was beer. Right. And um, I tend to be a one project person. So I work <laughs> on something a really long time and I get deep into it and I try to get it as right as I can and then we move on to something else. And so we did the beer and then we attacked whiskey in the same way. Um, and now we're going uh, after the food in the kitchen in that same way. So you're kind of just cycling back through and just trying to like, all right, so we've done you these You can things. always improve. You can always improve. Right. Absolutely. And that's that's really encouraging to hear. Thank you so much for your time today, Polly. Oh, it's I, my pleasure. It was an honor to meet you, quite honestly. Um, I'm Isaac Carroll. This has been Geeks on Tap. This has been Polly Watts. And uh, next beer is probably on my director, because I can't afford anymore. Cheers. <laughs>